and welcome to another episode of Half Court Press. He's Wilson Moore. I'm John Walker, and and let us steal your ears for the next half hour or so because we've got a uh, we've had a pretty eventful week. Um, we said that last week after what had been a relatively quiet off season, um, but if you think we had stuff to talk about a week ago, boy, do we have a treat for you in today's episode. Uh, before we dive into things, though, Wilson. How the- I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, you know, um, obviously staying busy because of uh, Nebraska news and whatnot. I think it's funny we decided to do this, you know, this morning. And then because so much stuff had happened in recent days and then more happened just in like the couple hours yeah. between. Uh, yeah, but yeah, staying busy. Uh saw Jason Isbell in La Vista last night. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I went to his concert we that made it sound like we were like <laughs> hanging out but uh uh yeah can't can't complain about anything right now were you not hanging out with jason isbell oh uh, you know we were going to but he he was busy <laughs> he's he's got another stop on the tour yeah that tracks that tracks yeah i uh that's cool though that's cool i know a bunch of people went to that i i'm the i wasn't cool enough i didn't go to zach bryan i didn't go to jason yeah. isbell i um i was consumed by Creighton yeah. news, yeah, and so, know, I think I think our readers respect that. Yeah, I hope I sh- <laughs> I sure hope. Um, yeah, man, it's been nuts. It's been an interesting week since the last time we talked. Let's dive right into it. Yeah, um, let's go in just chronological. I think this is maybe the best way. That is yeah. the best way to to accurately kind of show everybody what a uh, what a cluster the last week has been. Yeah. And how how quickly things picked up all at once. More so for Creighton than Nebraska. But the Nebraska news is pretty seismic for next year. Especially what we learned a little bit ago. Yeah. Um, so so with there, man, you know, we talked last Friday. And in Friday, you know, already a pretty eventful day in the state of Nebraska. Um, with everything that's going on. And weather-wise, and in, in, in the middle of all of that, um, Creighton guard Trey Alexander declares for the NBA draft and, and makes it official. You know, that was the expectation all along. Creighton kind of figured that him and Ryan Kalkbrenner were going to test the waters again. And, and yeah, that, that was accurate. Um, Creighton doesn't expect, expect Trey Alexander back. Um, he kind of seemed like in his announcement post that he was dead set on, you know, going, going to the NBA and fulfilling what he called a lifelong dream. Um, so that, that was the, the first snowball of, of many men. And then, um, yeah, so that was already pretty, pretty big right there, you know, and just kind of what Trey's meant to this program over the last three years. And, and especially what one he meant to this team this past season and two, what he would have meant should he have returned next season. Um, so pretty pretty massive for the Jays. And then Saturday they had Texas Tech transfer Pop Isaacs. Um, you know, I'd I'd be remiss if I didn't mention kind of the I don't I don't want to say baggage. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, but there's some off the court stuff that, that yeah, you and, uh... you have to be comfortable with in adding pop isaacs um you know he he had had a civil lawsuit where he was accused of um sexually assaulting a, a 17 year old girl last year in the bahamas um i think texas tech played in like battle for atlantis or somewhere somewhere over there but um you know that was dismissed last week um and and yeah, so you, and, and then he had a Title IX hearing, like a, a hearing in, with a Title IX panel, and they said, you know, he's good. So, so there were there was some stuff that you had to be comfortable with in taking Pop Isaacs, and and obviously Greg McDermott, and then were comfortable enough with it to to, to let him, you know, come to the program. Um, but then with that, you know, just the basketball player that that Creighton's getting, you were losing, you know, a three level scorer and somewhat of a pesky defender and Trey Alexander. You needed to go find a replacement at the two. And, and I think they did that in getting Papa Isaacs. Um, but there's, there's no question that, you know, it had to be 
a situation that was flushed out by both parties. Pop Isaac said that he wanted to go somewhere that he was comfortable. Um, and obviously, you know, again, Creighton had to be comfortable kind of bringing him in with, with everything he, that, that was going on off the court. Um, so that was, that was just kind of the tip of the iceberg for Creighton before a couple more moves over the last few days. But Nebraska had a pretty significant addition in there as well. It did, yeah. Nebraska added Braxton Mia, who's, as we discussed before we started recording, I've not heard his name said out loud. I think that's how it's pronounced, M-E-A-H. In any case, um, they added some size, which they will uh, – um, which they'll need, uh, especially given the news of yeah. 45 minutes ago, which we'll get to. But Mia is an interesting fit because he's someone that Nebraska didn't have um, much of uh, or at all last season. I think um, he'll fill a role that was supposed to be Blaze Kada, but Blaze was injured all, all of last year as a rim protector and a rebounder and a rim runner. You know, Nebraska didn't have that last year. They didn't really have, an, like, a traditional rim protector. Um, yeah. uh, you know, they had some big men, rink mass, Josiah Alec, neither of them really fit that specific archetype. And they have that with Braxton, with Braxton Mia. He'll be a guy who can get rebounds. You know, we saw a lot last year against bigger, brawnier, more physical teams. Uh, yeah. Teams were able to push, uh, push Nebraska around a bit, and you would think Mia – Helps with that. He is 7 1 and a big dude. He's a lob threat, like on the pick and roll in the offensive end. So, an interesting skill set. One Nebraska didn't have last year. You know, he is, uh, he has his limitations. I don't think he has attempted a three pointer in his, uh, um, in his college career. You know, he's not the most like technically refined guy. You know, he's not going to be. You know, he's not going to be rink masked, um, right. but he's going to be, um, he's going to bring something Nebraska didn't have a season ago. And um, we'll see how that fits into Nebraska's uh, rotations and everything that comes with that, because it gives them, you know, some more defensive punch. It gives them a little more adjustability depending on the opponent. Yeah. And, and I think that is, you know, it's no secret that that rink mast was kind of undersized for the position, right? Like in in the Big Ten, especially. You know, um, so we we saw at different points last year where maybe that did catch up to Nebraska sometimes, or you know, we saw rink mast go straight at Zach Eady and in in you know one of the Huskers win over Purdue, and so you know, but but I don't think it's a secret to say that rink mast was somewhat undersized for the position. Yeah. Um, and Braxton Mia, you know, not only is seven foot one and 250 pounds, you, you could use that beef in the big 10. Absolutely. But he, he's a career 72% shooter. Yeah. And correct. He's never taken a three in his career. That's not his, that's not his role. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah to, I mean, to your point, if he had had enough, it's weird. He's not on the like official NCAA yeah. um, website. I don't know exactly their rules for like volume and minimum number of attempts, but uh, he led the country in two point field goal percentage last yeah. year. You know, yeah, yeah like seventy seven percent last year, which is wild, even for a guy yeah. seven one. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, he, yeah, he's never had a season in which he averaged over five shots a game. Um, you know, but, but you take a guy who averages, he pushes 10 points a game about. And for the past couple of seasons, he averaged 7.2 rebounds and 5.3. You'll certainly take that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it would have been a pretty solid addition to the lineup. I would have loved to envision a world where Zach or Braxton Mia and Rink Mast coexist on the court at the four and five. Um, but before we kind of dive into more Creighton news, we we found out earlier today, earlier Thursday, that that Braxton Mia and Rink Mast sharing the court together will not be a thing, at least not in 2024, 25. 
No, it will not. And that is because Rink Mast is having surgery on his left knee and taking a medical red tough. shirt. Yeah, very tough. tough. Not not shocking. You know, this is a thing that um, uh, affected him through all of last season. Yeah. You know, he had like a minor procedure in December, missed a couple of games and played the rest of the season. But it was a constant kind of subplot to the season. You know, he had to... Uh, um, they had to really manage his load and practice. He wasn't, he really wasn't like full go in practice for the, yeah. the rest of the season as they figured out the best way to deal with that. And yeah, um, I think it's notable in his statement that he um, uh, said, you know, for the rest of my career and just life, this is the best option, which is, I think, a thing I think people um should really understand that this isn't just about basketball this is making sure yeah. he's just healthy out and about in it in his daily life which is probably even more important um and yeah uh it's obviously too early to speculate um you know what that will mean for 2025 26 but he will be eligible for that season he'll right. get a medical re- red shirt um it would be his seventh year of college if he did come back um yeah, but that's we, just we've seen a, a few of those. Yeah, yeah, especially in you know the COVID era. Man, if he were to come back, he'd be like one of the last like COVID era guys of uh, yeah, um, you know, like guys who got that extra season. Yeah, because this upcoming, you know, not this off season, obviously, but next off season, like they're gone essentially. The the yeah. co- the extra COVID years, yeah. and the and obviously, rank mass is just kind of in a an interesting spot where you know yeah. I'd imagine that not too many players in the country who do still have a COVID year are like, yeah, I'm going to use that two years from now because I'm medically redshirting. Yeah. So, no, he'll be one of the last ones for sure. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a that's a big blow for the Huskers. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, Nebraska, um, uh, yeah. Nebraska just got another commit. Um, <laughs> uh we can get to this in a second, but um, uh, uh, yeah, Nebraska. He was uh, Rink was maybe the most like heavily relied upon player on the sure. team last year. I mean, and it wasn't they just it wasn't just him as a big man. It wasn't just you know posting up and getting rebounds. He did a lot. He led the team in assists. You know how how many centers lead their team in assists? They used yeah. them, like they used Derek Walker the year before. You know. Well, at the top of the key, high post, um, you know, uh, back to the basket, survey, survey the floor, hit guys, uh, five out, going to, going to the rim. And yeah, he, he did a little bit of everything. He rebounded, he shot threes, he scored 34 points against Ohio State. So that's a, that's a significant, significant blow to, uh, to Nebraska. And it's going to put more of an onus on Andrew on Andrew Morgan um, this upcoming season because he has a kind of similar skill set. It's not the same, but um, he can do some of the same things. I know they uh, um, they uh, wanted to uh, use him in a w- way similar to Mast, and now they'll have a chance to of him, you know, getting the ball, initiating yeah. offense, um, and everything that that entails. Yeah. And and that's kind of, you know, good on, I think we'd said this a couple of weeks ago, good on Fred Hoiberg for knowing that there was probably a chance they didn't have rink mask, whether that meant he had this surgery that we now know, or if he left, um, you know, there, there was always a good chance that they didn't have rink mask or, or a chance anyways. And so they got on top of that with Andrew Morgan. And, and now, you know, we're sitting here talking about how nice it would have been to have Andrew Morgan and Braxton Mio on the floor at the same time, right? But but, but as you kind of, you know, I kind of learned through you, Andrew Morgan was brought to Lincoln with the intention of playing that rank mask-ish yeah. role. And and so maybe maybe the four or five doesn't include, you know, rank mask and, 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 and Braxton Mio. But I still think maybe you'd get at least somewhat of the same thing in Andrew Morgan and Braxton yeah. Mia, if that's how it plays out. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't think there'd be a massive, massive, massive drop-off in terms of what the potential could look like with that lineup. Uh, but it's obviously, you know, we, we're talking about what ranked mass meant to that team this year. 
I mean, you could only imagine that it was going to be better with another off season. Um, so, yeah, man, we we did find out a little bit about a Creighton big though. Or do you know? Are you are you caught up on a? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, okay. Let's let's, hear, of... let's let's yeah. Let's break some news real quick on half court. How yeah, N- Nebraska just got a commitment from Justin Bolus. From uh, he is he is a local kid, um, Lincoln High School. That's literally like 500 feet away from my apartment. Um, uh, yeah, L- Lincoln High most recently at Southeast Community College, so also in t- uh, in town. Uh, six nine forward. Uh, looks like he'll be a walk on at at Nebraska. Um, that is all I have right now. Uh, apologies to just. If he's listening to this, this happened 20 minutes ago, and I haven't had much time to do re- research. Um, but yeah, six nine forward, so bring a little bit of size again. Um, they, uh, uh, he'll be a walk on, so um, not a, um, you know, we'll we'll see how much he figures yes. into uh, the picture for Nebraska um, in this upcoming season. Maybe a little more than expected a day. A day ago with this news about mass but right. um uh we'll, we'll see where he uh um how he fits in we do know uh people from nebraska love nebraska and uh um i think uh let's see both will only be the uh with josiah alec leaving only only two guys who went to uh high school in lincoln with him and sam hoiberg okay so so where's that this will kind of take me into into creighton but Real quick, where does that leave Hoiberg in them scholarship wise? Well, if, if, uh, if he's going to be a walk on, and and obviously the thing with Rink, like where where does that leave them right now? Yeah, um, Nebraska still has uh, two open scholarships available. Uh, Mask will still count as a scholarship. Right. He'll be he'll be with the team for his rehab. He'll be around. Um, there was a reference, like in Hoiberg's statement uh, when this news came out, that. You know they plan to lean on him as a leader and a veteran and right. all of the all of those things. So Mass will still be around. Nebraska has two scholarships left. Um, I think it would make sense if they only filled one because that's often um, how it go how it goes. Um, teams uh, teams will leave a scholarship open. Nebraska would have done that last year, but they um, added Boogie Coleman real late after Aaron right. New, after the fallout from a. Uh, the gambling scandal involving Aaron Ulis in Iowa. Um, so yeah, we'll see what they, uh, how they use those last one or two scholarships, who comes. I got to figure that's a tough sell on someone to yeah. come for one of those last two scholarships. So at this point, you know, the roster and the, like, you know, they have a good sense of who they want, on, who they have on the team and who they want to do what. And, you know, if, most teams are running, you know, like an eight, nine man rotation, you know, whoever the 12th guy on that team isn't going to play a whole lot. So I wonder how you, yeah. how you pitch that to guys. I wonder what kind of player is interested. If it's someone younger who wants the chance to develop and anything like that. So we'll see how that, uh, how that plays yeah. out. Yeah. And that's the tricky part. You know, that's, you know, that, like I said, that'll kind of take me into Creighton talk. We, we found out that after you know, an eventful weekend last weekend with Trey and Pop Isaacs that um, Fred King was coming back. Or, or I guess let's start here. Let's start here. Uh, let me let me walk you through my last three days or whatever it is. So Tuesday morning, uh, the NBA releases their, you know, early entrance for the draft. And Trey Alexander's on there, obviously. We expected him to be. And Ryan Kalkbrenner is on there as well. And so you're like, okay. Yeah, it seems that the the you know Creighton was kind of operating as if those two were going to go through the process, and you know they 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 knew that Trey was probably going to stay in because of the draft class, right? Like this is a good opportunity to get drafted, and they knew that that Ryan there was a good chance that Ryan Kaufbrenner came back. You know, he's happy in Omaha, um, and and yeah, so they were they were kind of operating on that sense, and so he's listed as an early entrant entrant in the NBA draft. And a couple of hours later, um, it, Fred King kind of announces that he's coming back. And it was like, okay, Fred King spent less than three weeks in the transfer portal. Um, the only thing that I saw is that he he reportedly visited one school. I think it was UC Santa Barbara. 
Um, so, you know, not a massive market is what it seems like from the outside in. And so he says, yeah, I'm just going to go back to Creighton, man. They're familiar, you know, it's a familiar situation for him. Greg McDermott and them know what they're getting in Fred King. Like they know the player Fred King is. Um, so, you know, that, that kind of helps. And then less than 24 hours after that, Ryan Kalkbrenner come or, or Greg McDermott tweets and says, Hey, at Ryan Kalkbrenner, um, you know, Bill Self and Hunter Dickinson are coming to, to Omaha in December. What do you, you know, I might need your help that night. What do you think? And it was like, is this happening right now? <laughs> and then, uh, and then, you know, Ryan drops one of the funnier announcement, you know, return announcements that I've seen by, by replying to that and just like tagging his fiance, Rachel and saying, cancel the honeymoon. The, I mean, that, that, was, is, that was well done. That was inspiring. Yeah. Was dead yeah. And perfect. Yeah. And, you know, I'd, I'd love to think that Ryan Kalkbrenner has that like kind of Jim Halper <laughs> wittiness to him. Um, and that was like the perfect example. Cause you can just picture him like sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. And everybody's like, Oh my God, what is Ryan Kalkbrenner going to do? <laughs> right. And he just like slowly looks into the camera, you know, looks at Rachel, looks back at the camera and he's like, cancel the honeymoon. Like it, it, you could just, I could just see that playing out. So yeah, massive news, massive news. Um, and, and that, you know, like I said, kind of brought us into it. Creighton's roster is after the past week, eight days. Um, Creighton's roster is really taking shape for what it's going to look like next year. They only have one scholarship open after the Ryan Kaltbrenner announcement. Um, they didn't lose anybody to further to the portal. Um, you know, their their three portal kind of attrition guys were Brock Weiss, Jonathan Lawson, Lawson and, and Josiah Dotzler. But nobody entered at the last second. Um, they they got a couple of portal additions again in Pop Isaacs and in Arizona State transfer Jemai Neal. And so yeah, the, the roster is almost set. What they do at that final spot, I have no clue. Um, because it's tricky. Do you, no pun intended here for what I'm about to say. Um, do you do you hold the last roster spot open on the slimmest chance? that Trey Alexander doesn't get the feedback he wants. But then you also put, you know, I'm, I'm assuming Pop Isaacs didn't come here to, to be a backup, right? Like that's such a, that's such a tough spot. I don't think Trey's coming back. Like I, I think Trey is gone, but you never know. Right. So that's the, that's kind of the tricky part is do you, do you even hold it open for the slimmest chance? Do you look to fill it? And if so, what do you, you know, if you're Greg McDermott, what do you look at this roster and think it needs? Um, or like you said, do they just kind of rock with an open scholarship? Some teams do that so that, I don't know, there's a coaching change in August and a really premium player comes open. Now we can go pursue him. Oh, a midseason transfer becomes available who we think would, would really, you know, add to our team. We have the flexibility to add him, you know, so – so we'll, we'll find out, I'm assuming, you know, somewhat soon what they're going to do with the scholarship. Um, but, yeah, man, a, a pretty, let me say, eventful, a pretty eventful week between uh, between Creighton and Nebraska. Maybe maybe the most eventful week of the offseason? So yeah, far? I'd say so. For Creighton, for sure. Creighton, yeah. for sure. And I, th- I think if, if you're looking at, like, like for us combined, you know, like the yeah. collective amount of news that we have had to uh, uh, deal with, I'd say th- this week. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. What's uh, what's, what's, what's next in Nebraska? What's the next step for them? Just trying to fill the last two scholarships. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, like I said, I think Nebraska has a pretty good sense of what it will, uh, um, you know, what its roster will look like. I think at the very end, it's kind of just, you know, filling in the gaps. Who can you use this last scholarship on, yeah. last two? Um, but yeah, you know, I maybe it is irresponsible of me to say this after the avalanche of news we have gotten hit with over the past four or five days, but I think things are inching closer to stability, um, just sure. in terms of 
knowing things and things quieting down a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. I, I, f- I feel that way anyways. Um, like my last two weeks have been really, really just kind of like solely focused on, uh, on waiting on, you know, news of any sorts. Um, and then we've kind of had an avalanche two two pretty splashy transfer portal commits. Um, you find out what happens at two of your program pillars, really. Yeah. Um, you know, Ryan, Ryan Kaufbrenner is going to go down as maybe the, you know, one of undoubtedly one of the best Creighton players of all time. Um, some people have already put him right up there on a tier with Doug. Um, and he's going to have a fifth and final year to add to that, you know, obviously. Uh, and the Trey Alexander, you know, he, in his own right, w- was just kind of a pillar of the program over the last four years. And and now you kind of know what's going on with both of them for the most part. So, yeah, man, I don't know. If uh, not to put you on the spot, but I'm assuming you've thought about this a little bit with the roster shaping up. Do you have an early, a, a way too early starting five for, for night one? Yeah, I've thought about it a little bit. And I'm not totally sure just because it depends on if they want to use Jawan Gary at the three or the four, because for yeah the first half of the season when he was healthy and everything, um, Nebraska played him at the four with Mast at the five. Um, and then in like February, his last like 10, 11 games of the season, they went, uh, they went with a bigger starting five, moved Jamarcus mm-hmm. Lawrence to the bench, Bryce Williams, at point, and then it was Gary at the three, Alec at the four, Mastin at the five. So it depends. I think one way or another, Gary, obviously Gary will start, as will Bryce Williams. Yeah. Um, I feel fairly confident now from what we've seen, um, Andrew Morgan will be the five. Um, yeah. Bryce will 100. Uh, Bryce will 100, as he is in – Jawan Gary's contacts. That was my favorite thing to come out of that video was that we as a society learned that. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and then I wouldn't be shocked if Aaron Euless is the starting point guard. Um, so then that leaves, um, that's four right there. And yeah. I'm not sure about the fifth, how they decide to use that, where they play Gary. Right. They go big, they go small. Um, maybe, um, uh, I think uh, Gavin Griffiths or Connor Asijan, I think, are two of the more likely yeah. candidates for that fifth spot. But um, it's a long ways from now. Um, yeah, I, su- I suppose I suppose Creighton is a little more stable um, than Nebraska. Yeah. I mean, if you, you put Isaacs in Alexander's spot, uh, is there yeah. any? Yeah, is there? Yeah, anything it's. Other I than mean, that? you know, it's a, it's assumedly going to be. It's assumedly going to be, you know, Ashworth at the one, Isaacs at the two, um, probably, probably Jemiah Neal, the Arizona State transfer at the three. He, I mean, six six wing. He he kind of fits the, um, not the exact play style, but kind of the, the that role for for kind of how they use Baylor Shireman. You know, they 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 got to the end of the year and Baylor was kind of relied on to be a primary defender like in addition to being you know their you know a biggies player of the year candidate um for his offensive abilities you know he, he really added a defensive element to that at the end of the year i mean he he guarded dalton connect for 40 minutes in the tournament um so you know jemiah neal feel a little bit of that it won't quite look the same i don't i don't want it like i don't want anybody thinking that i'm saying that he'll his style of play will look like baylor's because it will not um and then you know probably mason at the four call at the five it, yeah. it really is pretty pretty simple for creighton um although was, i i got sparked into a, a twitter conversation i will not say debate really somebody had just asked me you know which you know one who else do i think the jay should add and two which freshman was i most excited to watch and and that really that got my mind going um because I think all three of the freshmen, genuinely, and, and I guess that's kind of the benefit of having a relatively smaller recruiting class um, with only three guys. I, I genuinely could see all of them having a role off the bench this year. Um, 
I think Ty Davis kind of fits watching the, what I have of Ty Davis. I think he can have like a similar aspect or a similar role that Stephen Ashworth does as kind of a distributor. Um, Larry Johnson is going to be so damn fun to watch off the bench. Um, really brings kind of a slasher element that they didn't have last year. Like Baylor Shireman would punch some home. Trey would punch some, obviously. But Larry Johnson hunts for heads. Like he wants to meet you at the rim. He wants to throw it down on you. And I respect that. Um, so that he'll be fun to watch. And then, you know, this, this was my answer. I think it has to be Jackson McAndrew because when you look at the three and four of, of, of what, you know, the, those spots and what it pertains to next year's roster, he could earn some real minutes, especially at the three. Um, but it all depends how they want to go. You know, do they – do we get into training camp or, or, or do we get into camp and – I don't know. I'm spitballing, obviously. Do we get into camp and you think Mason Miller's had a really, really good off season to the point where you'd slide him to the three and play Jason Green at the four? Or, by, like, they're, they're going to have some options. Um, it was a pretty hard set seven-man rotation this year, as we all saw. Um. I don't – like, they're going to have a lot more freedom in next year's roster um, because I think there will just be a lot of opportunity. You know, it, it was so hard to get other people into the game last year because it's so hard to take Trey Alexander and Baylor Shireman and Ryan Kalkbrenner off the court. Like, it, that's tough with, with how well all three of them played last year. But two of those three are gone. So opportunity is going to be there, especially, you know, I think whether it's Davis or Johnson, which one of those kind of gets the reserve guard spot, like which guard first comes off the bench, you know, and Sterling Knox is still in that conversation as well. He's coming back. Um, and then, yeah, at the three, I think that's probably going to be the, the most interesting thing. What happens at the three and four? Does Jason Green have such a, you know, does Jason Green have such a good off season after impressing down the stretch of last year? Um, you know, it'd be tough to, to, to take Mason Miller off. Obviously you bring in Jemiah Neal and you're high on him. You have Jackson McAndrew, you have Isaac Trout. So that, that the three and the four will be the thing that I watch the most about Creighton next year. But we, we had at least in Creighton's case, there were a lot of, of questions as recent as eight days ago. And we have answers to a lot of those now. That's the important thing for Creighton. So, yeah, man, it's been, uh, it's been nuts. It's, it's, it's been has. a couple of days. It has been <laughs> some days. Yeah. Yeah, man. We, we, we didn't uh, even talk yeah. about the schedule stuff that came out yesterday. But, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. We got time. How about we it? Got, How about we got it? time. Well, shoot, now I don't know this off the top of my head, but Nebraska got its oppo- got its opponents for the conference season. It will play three teams twice, uh, Iowa, Ohio State, and um, Maryland, which beyond Iowa are really random. Like, right. And, like, I don't know. It, it was like the Big Ten set those up with like, not just ignoring, but, like, a contempt for, like, regional um yeah like uh like i don't know it like michigan and ohio state will only play each other once this year yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah right like yeah yeah, okay who cares about those um yeah 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 that's uh that's where we are we don't have dates or times uh but uh the nebraska Sorry to fans who are hoping to make a whole, uh, who are hoping to make a January excursion to Southern California. But they are not playing at UCLA or USC. Both teams will come to Lincoln. Um, That's cool, though. Yeah, and Nebraska will play at Washington and at Oregon. If anyone wants to do a little Pacific Northwest uh, road trip, because uh, I think they're going to have like travel partners. You know, like I think for sure, for sure. Like I think because I think everyone like 
I don't think there's anyone who is like playing at USC and hosting UCLA. I think everyone's like on the right. same. Right. So it makes sense to, I think they're going to do that. Like, I think anyone who plays one will play the other in the same way. That's the old, uh, that's the old, uh, that's the division two route, man. They do that in yeah. the MIAA. You get a travel yeah. partner. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They don't. Yeah, for sure. Mm-mm-mm. Well, you got anything else, Wilson? I don't think so. You want even more? You want, yeah. You you want even more? Are you not entertained? No, I yeah. I I think I think that's a pretty good summation of everything that's happened since the last time we hopped on here. It's been nuts. Um, it's quieted down. Will quiet down. You know, like you said, Nebraska's Presumably. only got two. Yeah, I mean, Nebraska's only got a couple of scholarships open. Creighton only has one. So um, things things have things have and will assumedly quiet down. Yeah. Um, so. We'll see. We'll see what happens uh, over the next week. Hopefully, we uh, we've got more to talk people's ears off. You know, next time we hop on here. But yeah. but that that's going to do it for this week's episode of Half Court Press. Make sure to uh, to subscribe to the Omaha World Herald. You can find all of our content online at omaha.com. We'll see y'all next week. Peace.